Easy E, how are we? Sean E, I tell you what, I feel like I've gone 12 rounds. <laughs> I am wrecked. <laughs> I'd say so. I mean, I, I, I think I broke the county borders once or twice in Kildare to Dublin. But every time I looked at your Instagram, you're all over the place. And then last night you're in Saudi Arabia for a big heavyweight fight. And they say in terms of sport... There is nothing like seeing a heavyweight fight. So I know it's the any given run day podcast, but you are wrecked and it's going to be why well, you're very tired throughout this performance of the podcast. So we got to find out exactly why. How was it? it does it live up to the hype? Um, oh, so the undercard, the one or two of the fights were good. And obviously, like, was it good? Yes. Yes. Sorry. Long story short. Yes. <laughs> but I've already planned out. I need to use more words than yes. So, uh, <laughs> so um, it was a it was a yes, but it was okay. a yes, but the fight itself was amazing. Like if, if anyone was looking at my stories, the just a bit, if you forget about everything else, the the build up, the fifteen minutes from the previous fight to the fight, the fight itself, like amazing, absolutely yeah. amazing. Like it was, it was, it was. And you could feel the nerves in the room. And uh, in round seven, when he was nearly punched through a rope, you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> like it's, uh, <laughs> it, it's absolutely crazy. And it's amazing how much of a boxing expert you become when you're not the one bit and punched. Like, get it up. <laughs> Just the armchair boxer coming out. And you're, Why yeah. he's not coming in this way? Why is he doing this and this? <laughs> yeah. But the best part was, I suppose, atmosphere. Like, I'd say... I would have been annoyed by more people if it was in Ireland, the UK or or mm. wherever it was because alcohol. There was no alcohol. It's a, it's a dry country. You can't drink alcohol. Okay. It's illegal. So there was a difference in the crowd. The atmosphere was good, but it was different. It was right. very different. There was, and even sober, there was a lot of idiots. But it's it was just, there was a lot in terms of They need to get better at managing events before they can start taking on these world events. Um, they really? really, really do. Yeah, little things like the security and the ushers uh, looked like they were in secondary school and people were just sitting in anyone's seat and then just wouldn't get out of the seats. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. You were, okay. you, were, you were asking, uh, I don't know, one of the entourage of the Gypsy King to get out of your seat and they just tell you to fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, it didn't happen to us, but it was happening all around us. And then you you have your teenager from Saudi just go, yeah. So it was, yeah, there's there's elements of it that I don't know if it's ready to be the, the host of the largest events in the world. Right. Um, but having said that, the fight itself, yeah, absolutely amazing. It was it was amazing to be there. It's something I will always say. Like, it was people are like, why did you go? I was like, no one knew that, like, the thriller in Manila, the fight in the Philippines that go down in history is one mm. of the greatest fights of all time. I was like, to say you were there for the big this undisputed, round, the undisputed fight, yeah. the zero zero, someone has to lose, someone has to lose it all, someone's ego has to take a hit was, was bizarre. Like, and, and it was so, like, missed, like, I, we were checked in, in in the UAE, so I flew in from Istanbul and then I went back, got changed, went straight back to the airport and I was walking along and got to check in and looked outside the window. I was like, an A380. I've never been on the A380. I was like, oh, this is amazing. So we flew on the largest plane in the world for an hour and 45 to Riyadh. Well, Kante, thanks for explaining <laughs> the wrestles when an A380 is. I, I was trying to jump in and ask. <laughs> the largest plane in the world that can fly 14 to 16 hours from Vegas to Doha. Like, we used it to essentially do a London flight. Oh, like, geez. it was it was unbelievable. There was that many people going because Dubai... Dubai was the hub. People flew to Dubai, then flew to the flight, then flew out of out of Saudi. They did what we did. We did it 24 hours. I was back in all in 22 hours. So oh, wow. flew out from here and back in all. So yeah, pretty tired. Um, but an experience. Um just to see it, to to be part of a, an atmosphere. But the other part of me is like, not not that you need alcohol, but what would it be like in a Vegas? You know, what would it be like when yeah, yeah, it's just 
when it's just an event it. management yeah. done yeah. right yeah. but but like when the screen came on and and you're just seeing the main man announcing and you're like oh my god <laughs> like he's flown in all the way and i was just yeah it was cool and then hearing that let's get ready to rumble and then the showboating from Tyson Fury was brilliant. His entrance was probably the best entrance music I've ever seen uh, that uh, just took the piss out of the whole <laughs> thing. And No, it was good. It was. It was very good. It was a great experience. It's nice to have things like that on their doorstep. Like, it was an hour and a half, like, for me. Um, there was yeah. thousands of people from Ukraine, from the UK, that flew all the way just for the fight, you know. So, for me, it was great. It was it was a short hop and a skip and, and we were at the, the undisputed world heavyweight title fight. Well, we won't get into who won, who shouldn't have won, whose jaw was broken and all the rest because we don't know anything about boxing. What we do know, what you know, is about logistics in, in terms of organizing the Martin trip away. The emails have been sent. What is going on? Yeah, we're moving it to Riyadh in Saudi. No. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> it's now a desert run. No, we are going to Barcelona. So the marathon trip, Rome, Rome was too expensive. We were a little bit heartbroken, to be completely honest. Uh, Sean, <laughs> Sean was like a child that never got his Christmas present when when we discovered that Rome, the flights to Rome were nearly a thousand euros return. And it's just like, that's New York. Like that's... <laughs> Well, that's, we that's didn't know Dubai. it was Paddy's weekend, but it was also, wasn't it, the, the final of the Six Nations yeah. and stuff was on, as well. not the final, the last game of the Six last Nations. Game. Now, look, we did know, like, when you do your research, you do know that. But I, I didn't, didn't know. know, you knew. <laughs> it was, was going to, I didn't think it was going to be that bad. But, yeah. so it is, so to keep it in the same, because the idea is we wanted to do a, a spring marathon. It's the week before instead of the week after. We know it might not suit some people, but that will definitely suit people on the waiting list. For those who haven't received a link, I, I have received an email from someone who, who said they haven't received a link. We are sending it to everyone who's been on the list. The bus is full. So those who have signed up, make sure that you pay your deposit. We are going to extend it until the 1st of May, just or 1st of June, sorry, uh, just beyond payday, to be fair to everyone who, who's getting the notice on it this week. The indications from the organizers are it's going to be the 9th of March. It's yet to be clarified on their end for whatever reason. Maybe it's sponsors. I don't know. But we do need to secure deposits to secure the, the place on the trip because the demand is high. Unreal. And it's supposed to be a flat course as well. Yeah, flat course, uh, which means PBs, which means I can't do my usual, just show up and do an any old kind of marathon. I'm, I'm going to have to gonna have to go for my own PB. Uh, and it's it's... It's just going to be different. Like for me, organizing it is, it's a little bit terrifying. We put up one post. We didn't really advertise. Mm. And 60 people were like, yeah, we're coming. <laughs> yeah, that was bananas. <laughs> and then I'm looking through the list of names. And I was like, I, I don't, I haven't met 56 of these people. And it's, <laughs> it's, that's when you realize that this is kind of cool and, and kind of scary at the same time. So the idea is, Sean, that the whole weekend is, from a Friday afternoon, uh, because there are people on that list uh, from Donegal, from Cork, from Limerick, uh, from Galway. And we want to be fair to everyone. The, the idea is to not wreck everyone. So we are going to fly out Friday afternoon. The killer with this is it's no longer the bank holiday weekend. So we are sorry if it doesn't suit people. And we understand if it doesn't suit people to partake. There are people on the waiting list and and the, the trip will continue. So it might need an extra annual leave day or two. And then from Friday afternoon, we land into Barcelona on the Friday evening. We're staying in a four star hotel, which is a 10 minute stroll from the starting line, which is. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's it's absolutely amazing. We've booked out the hotel, which is great. <laughs> so I think it's not so great for anyone else who shows up into our entourage. It's it's going to be a weird experience for them. But but for us. It's going to be absolutely amazing, particularly anyone who's done a marathon and had to get a train, bus or plane back from a marathon finish line. It's it's nice that we're only 10 minutes away mm. from the night of the marathon. When everyone has medals around their necks, we are going to go for a group dinner. We're going to go for a big celebration as we are in Barcelona. The problem with the marathon is it's on the Sunday, so there's only going to be one day of party. Well, depends on what kind of mood you're in, but there will <laughs> only be a... Uh, There'll only be one a day of party and that'll be the last day. And then the idea behind that is we'll we'll fly out the 
the late flight on the Monday. So we will be getting back about, I, I think it's 10 for 2245 is when we get back into Dublin. So for those, unfortunately, on the, the Cork, Limerick, Donegal end of things, you will be late home on the Monday. But the idea is Make so money. many are bringing guests. It's it's to give them a holiday as well. It's to mm-hmm. not be all about the marathon and to spend a day maybe doing one or two touristy things while may may or not be still intoxicated or hungover or or give people an, an opportunity to to get the afternoon beers in on a monday to celebrate a pb so so that's what we have in store for everyone it's it's look and and then eric approved any given run down top that's probably well that's where the pb is like. coming from isn't it because that's like it, the so. eric approved top and, and that is specified <laughs> eric approved some mad fluorescent colored thing to make yourself go faster. God knows what it's going to be, but it's Eric approved. Well, it's more so I didn't want to tie balloons to people, Sean, when they're walking around Barcelona. So I said, if I can put them in a t-shirt, at least <laughs> I'll be able to see them. So, um, yeah, so it's 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 going to be fun. Um, vision wise, I'm looking forward to the photograph on the 7th of May in Dublin Airport with our t-shirts on as a group of 60 heading off to to go do a marathon it, it's 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 exciting it's it's a first kind of group marathon we've organized that we couldn't believe the uptake we can't believe it's a sellout so if people do change their mind again we have updated a waiting list peep it's a marathon it's a year away things will change so if you are interested please fill out the waiting list because our spots if spots become available you'll be the first on the list and we'll also consider that for next year the year after if this one is a success to to share the love with those who are on the waiting list unreal yeah that's absolutely fantastic fair play for organizing all that and going to flights and everything else and I feel bad because I've done nothing this week because I had a long run last weekend and that pretty much led me to doing absolutely nothing. So uh, I'm glad you filled the intro. I was getting a bit of imposter syndrome, Sean, because you do everything with the podcast. I was like, right. (laughs) I'll organize a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Good job in logistics. <laughs> and I'm glad you're going to all these events around the world now just to see what works and what doesn't work and what you want to bring to the table for Barcelona next year in March. Yeah, I'll send me notes to Saudi Arabia and see if they'll take them. <laughs> 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 or they might listen oh, to this podcast. You, you actually might. <laughs> <laughs> they might listen to this podcast and never let me back in again. Oh, God. On that no intro music for this week's episode of the Any Given Monday podcast. Let's go. So you went for a big run. A big run, I call it. And actually, before we get into it, I was supposed to do notes because this one's got me all over the shop. I have to apologize to you because you actually didn't know about it the day before that, no, that I was doing didn't. this run. So <laughs> I, had a, I had a few choice words for you that day. You had. So here was my thinking. Do you know sometimes you build something up? up I, I was talking to our, our mutual friend, Elaine, who did, she went from Nice to... Lords on a cycle over a couple of days and she had to raise money for it so she's telling a load of different people about it and stuff like that and and it was going on for like a good couple of months and trying to get the train and everything in and by the time she got there it was like oh I, it, it, there was some excitement that's a bit of a letdown I think sometimes with events sometimes you the other way you I suppose the business and stuff you're doing you tell people I'm doing a business I'm running this I'm running this and then it's like you get that kind of high of telling people like, oh, congrats, fair play, Bab. But when it comes to actually doing it and doing the work, you're like on a down. Does that make sense? Are you, yeah, are you lost? No, I do. No, I think you're from the shit, Sean. Um, no, uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they obviously didn't cycle hard enough or fast enough. To... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's another that's yeah, another podcast. Yeah, I, only say, I, I say that because I know she listens. But the the I do get what you're saying, that... That the talking about it, well, well, I always look at it in the other way is is because it's always about nerves, like the talking about it and the waiting for it is the worst part. You know, when we look at it from in the military training perspective, knowing you were about to get beasted in the afternoon was actually worse than the beasting yeah. itself. But it's the same thing that, yeah, when you talk about it and you hype it up, when you actually do it, it's like, ah, that wasn't as grandiose as I thought it was going to be. So yeah, no, I, I 100% get it. But so, it still doesn't. We run a podcast. Oh, well, like, I knew it was cool. I, know, I threw a few hints. And in fairness, when I got down there, and, and um, the first people I saw was the guys from Dunedin 50K. And I was like, okay, this is going to be a good event. And then I saw Daryl Bryan has been on the podcast a couple of times. When he saw me, he goes, I knew you were doing it. I heard you at the end of the intro last week of the podcast. And you're like, you're doing it. 
So the reason I did it was after elevation, I had to talk. And of course, you in the podcast, we not just go down to Dublin and do two, eight hours and just leave it there. I know I can't do that for the Dublin Backyard Ultra just because of all the hills and everything else. I knew I just pushed myself until I was done and I wasn't getting 24 hours with any sort of hills. And a couple of days later, I knew about the Wexford Ring Festival on the same day. And, and I was like, Neve, what's your plans for the middle of May? Because I need someone to crew me through it. Like, and then uh, she's like, what do you have in mind? And I was telling her, she's like, you're an arsehole. Uh, <laughs> I think those are words. And I took it as, okay, we're good to go. We're in. So um, we had our wheelbarrow coming down the tent and all the rest and set up right beside the starting line. And um, yeah, it was just, I've, I don't know if you've ever been to Johnstown Castle, a state down in Wexford. I- have actually but have I've, you? Never, I've never gone with a wheelbarrow in a tent <laughs> <laughs> beautiful that's crowds <laughs> that's the difference between me and you Sean <laughs> <laughs> all these bad peacocks and stuff it's always oh, class like it's it's beautiful I can tell you the loop around there is 1.3k because I found out that I knew I'd have to do 120 times uh in in the space of 24 hours to to, to get the goal and of course with something like that you're trying not to think I'm running to this time tomorrow. I'm running to this time tomorrow. It's just like, just just take one loop at a time. There was 22, 23 that started a 24-hour loop. I think a few more may have started that time for a relay as well. And then halfway through then, 12 at 12 o'clock that night, the 12-hour group joins in. So there's a good bit of buzz kind of leading up to it because they start arriving at like 10, half 10 and stuff, the tents and stuff. And that creates a bit of atmosphere. And then six hours later, the six hour people start and that creates a bit more. And then the three and the one hour people, especially one hour people are there for a sprint. And, and, and you do feel like you want to um <laughs> get the shotgun and take the legs from under them. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, they're, know them kind of people. they're the type of people to show up and drink all the water in the race. Yeah, <laughs> but like no matter which one you're at I'm not saying it's the, the 24 hour 24 hour one each one presents his own challenges each one is tough like the 12 hour one to, to go throughout the whole Saturday prep for that night and then 12 hours you know you're, you're starting at midnight you're tired and then you're supposed to run your fastest 12 hours which is going to be faster than most people doing 24 over two 12 hours uh, shifts is not easy but um, I, I, I took off to start the race and I was like I'm going to jog three laps, walk a lap, and I stick to that consistently and see how it happens. I did not stick to that <laughs> consistently at all. How long, I was like, I feel long, good after three laps. I'm going to keep jogging a bit, get a bit of food and go again. <laughs> how long did that plan stick? Um, I remember looking at it, it was 16K gone, like in like 90, like, no, it was nearly two hours and it was 16K, 16, 18K. I'm like, I'm doing well. Jesus, this 24 hour thing. And I got in my head already. I was like, this could happen in 21, 22 hours. I'm going to have loads of time. God knows what I could do. Three hours in the field and stuff I'm like this is a stupid, stupid, stupid idea. Start walking now. And then six hours in, I genuinely thought I was done. So um, no. I, I genuinely, so it's, it, these races is like a roller coaster, so much up and down. Neve walked the 1.3K loop with me on the six hour mark. I was on target, but sure, the legs and all were goose and the, the mint cow cream was all coming back on. I, there was the longest <laughs> break I took after that. The oh, amount of I, people that still message us about that cow grease saying best stuff ever. <laughs> it is phenomenal. Any sort of strains and stuff that came on and I was a new man, but all the times I did it in elevation, I was like outside beside the, the coffee place. I had never put it on in the tent. Oh Don't. no, burn the eyes out <laughs> the, the eyes were burning. <laughs> I was like, what oh. am I doing? <laughs> so six hours in and I people just I, hearing people just hearing a strange move from the tent. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in there? <laughs> I was dejected, the sun was hot, the, the ice cream that Neve gave me and the good vibes from that had worn off, and I was going, This is happening again. I I I I am not hitting my target. It's a good thing I didn't tell too many people about this. Uh, and I'm just lying there, just putting the cream on me in a massage <laughs> gun. <laughs> I mean, like, I've got oh. another 18 hours of this. This is not happening. Like, this is just, this is awful. <laughs> but, I have um, to say, you're still not selling it to me, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. I won't. But um, yeah, back out, went for a walk. And all of a sudden, the cream kicked back in again. And I went for a little jog. And I was able to jog a bit more. And I was able to jog half a lap to a full lap. And then the plan changed to, that's what I went. 
three laps jog, one lap walk, half a lap walk with a bit of food, then do another half, uh, lap and a half jog, and then get some more proper food, and then go again. And that went for the next six hours or so. And like Neve came back from one, one time from Tesco, she just sliced a pizza. I'm like, no, no, Neve. And then all the guys, the Wex were running club, they had pizzas and chips. I'm like, my stomach's gonna, I can't, can't be doing that. I gotta sit with this, the, the set stra- uh, strategy of just whatever sandwiches, not have too much electrolytes because it was very hot. But I, I knew if I had too many electrolytes, I'd be screwed. So I put all that pressure on Neve. Uh, she wouldn't come on to the podcast, by the way, because like we come <laughs> on the podcast and just explain, like, put yourself over and how hard crewing is because it's very tough. And, I, and the odd time Neve wasn't there, the guys besides doing the 50k, they were like, Hey, Sean, if you need anything, I see you looking, you need anything, let me know. And um, Dara, John Murphy, and all that were there, they were all like in their breaks, do you need a bit of food, anything at all? Like, that's the great thing about this because all the tents are like so close to her that like everyone's just trying to help each other get as many miles in as you can and ju- just keep going from there. It, in terms of atmosphere for that, it's absolutely class. And what's it like? I know we talked about the previous elevation and it was beside the, bu- the pub, the cafe and the setup was nice. What was it like? Like obviously for those who haven't been, it's a beautiful setting and you do have the peacocks and you can hear the the loud call and it's serene and it's a nice one. It's a, I, well, one 120 laps is, is, is horrible. But it's, um, what was it like having such a nice venue with your tent there? Was there an element of comfort to it? No. Uh, um, no, the, the ground and stuff are nice. The run was nice. Comfort, uh, we, nothing's comfortable when you're running that well, long. Not for I, you. I'm you about you. <laughs> well, I, I'm asking well, from a person who might have to crew you from different... Uh, I don't care about you running. Oh, they I'm had a about great, what's it like in the facility. Um, if you want to take a couple of hours break, they had a phenomenal cafe. They had a museum there as well, actually. That kind of stuff. <laughs> yes, no. Facilities-wise... Uh, I love the guys at Elevation and the coffee was great and all, but uh, at, at Dublin Mountains, there, there's nothing there for that one. So they're, they're bottom of the list and that, but that was a great <laughs> event last year. Uh, so I'm not knocking them, but the amount of stuff and amenity stuff there, this one wins. And the weather yeah. there for this one was phenomenal as well. So yeah, I mean, like, that's why like, I was running around one lap and like Neve put up the Instagram story of just having the iceberg in front of me. And I was like, oh. Ice cream, <laughs> like stuff you're like that. You're not getting anywhere else. Like so that that kind of stuff was was cool. The fact that it was relatively flat. There's only one area where there's a slight incline, and if me and you were to do laps, we wouldn't notice it that much. But um, I don't know if it's because the heat, but over that 24 hours, that thing grew. So yeah. the, the hill got bigger <laughs> and bigger Mobile and bigger. It really did turn into a mountain, yeah. Oh, oh by, 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 I think by hour three or four, it was like, Sean, cop onto yourself. You walk this from now on. Because of the first couple of laps, like, ah, jog it up, it'll be all right. But I was like, you need to to, to walk it and, and, and go from there. Great buzz then when the, when the people came in for the 12 laps for the 12 hours and there was a couple of people there that, that, that knew us through the podcast. One or two said we need Google Translate for the podcast as well. And as I Mumble my words through this. I understand why. I want names. Who the fuck? <laughs> <did> you... <laughs> they were doing 12 people. hours. They were ahead of us, Eric. I couldn't get names. <laughs> <laughs> and they were running a lot faster. How did it feel, though? Obviously, um, I know from Cork, the half marathon catches up with you. Um, and they're 2K in. And you're questioning life. And they're like, yay, marathons. What was it like, I suppose, just 10 factors. One. We're we're halfway there. John Bon Jovi's kicking in, <laughs> and you're you're yeah you, you have that feeling of how far you've come, um. And then the other half is how sprightly people are <laughs> at midnight. How was that? So um, nerve wracking because I got to midnight and I only had eighty six kilometers done. The watch oh, because oh just, just halfway. Speaking of facilities, um, right before that hill, they've proper toilets. Uh, no cure, no, <laughs> that's genuinely such a, a relief, pun intended. Uh, and because I was having so much water in me, like every second lap, I had to go in there, and, and that added up a lot on the Garmin. Like, I finished <laughs> on the Garmin, like, I had an extra five, I think, extra five kilometers on the watch compared to what I actually did because of that going in and out because, because of the race course. So, that was great. And um, surprisingly enough, when I seen people near the start, I Throughout the night, I wouldn't see as many people. Um, I can't explain it. It was just 
you just kind of, I, I know it's only 1.3k loop, but they pass in your start and then like they're pacing themselves for 12 hours. It's not that big of a gap between 12 and 24 that you'd see them and then you might see them for three, four hours for different, like I'd see Dara maybe every three, four hours, like, hey, you getting on? Oh, I'm struggling. Hey, you getting on? Oh, I'm great. And it's like so many ups and downs between <laughs> all of us. It's, it's, it, it's bananas. Like the other thing was halfway through, I almost had, a uh, same mistake I made last year with the light. I thought I charged it, but I forgot to switch. So the um, lights start going dim on me. And Neve's dad had this big farmer light. Uh, like this thing would see. <laughs> the space beam. You could see Mars. <laughs> yes. So when you look across the, the lake and you see all of the, the runner lights and you see the sign to call Batman, it's like, that's my <laughs> <that's me." laughs> <laughs> <laughs> coming out. Anto was in the, doing the detail beside me. He's like, uh, Oh, Sean, you brought your camera out because this thing was just hanging <laughs> off your head. But it felt like the sun came up. It was a new lease of life. I somehow was getting three, four laps in. I'm like, this is brilliant. It was also the first time I had a cup of coffee in three, four weeks. And Interesting. So- Good thing the toilet's every one kilometer. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it could it could have ruined me. But um, Pastebo or not, I was I was so, I was drinking too much coffee and stuff like that, and I was like, right, I'm not having coffee for a week. And then two weeks out, I was like, ooh, if I don't have caffeine and coffee for another two weeks, I could do a Your whole Pete Russell on it. Yeah. And then yeah. three o'clock in the morning, get that caffeine kick and see what happens. So it was the first time having a proper cup, and I was like, I it could be placebo, could be placebo. That the yeah. big Batman light, I was good to go, um, and I was feeling great again for another half hour, like. I- it it is a placebo and it's not it, like it, it, there's science behind it. It is a drug. Mm. You weaned yourself off it and and or a, a, like it's an enhancement. It's it's caffeine and that's what it does. Like weaning yourself off it and then giving yourself that kick. Like you know, hundred percent, it's not placebo. It's it's clever. If anything, yeah. it's it's it is a clever method of doing it. But like, welcome to the club. I don't drink tea or coffee, and people <laughs> think I'm a scumbag. So like. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure I'll come back on the coffee since I'm like oh no <laughs> yeah I'm sure I will it's... but at the moment I'm not <laughs> yeah it's not that it saves you a fortune because I still buy soda pops every time someone wants to go for a coffee so you got your coffee it's three o'clock in the morning we're turning into a Garth Brooks song here fairly quick but <laughs> what what is going through your head in terms of the bit that's that would hurt me is the numbers so you're looking at your watch and you're like wait that doesn't make sense. I should be at this and it's saying I'm at this. How are you keeping track of how far you were? How was, because I find the maths keeps me going every lap. How are you find dealing with it now that your watch wasn't matching what you thought? <laughs> like, So yeah. there's a screen right before the start line and that tells you how many laps are done and what your true distance is. So I was looking at that, taking it off this. And I remember at the time I was 2.5K over what it what, what uh, I'm higher on my watch than what I actually was. So I was doing the maths and what I had left and then being like, I need to get around 165 on my watch the way I'm going ah, to get yes. 160. So that's, and I was constantly doing the maths. So I realized around the three o'clock in the morning, I'd initially planned to get 20 minutes sleep. And um, I realized that's not happening because like, you're not going to negative split something like this. And oh, I only had yeah. like 80, I think it was 85, 86. And I was like, my God, I've got another maths was hard now. Never mind back then. <laughs> like I've got 75 and 12 hours. I'm like, surely that's possible. But then I've only got 86. And then I kept thinking in terms of backyard ultras. I'm like, I'm an extra 6K ahead of what I'd be if I did a backyard ultra now. So I'm going to hit the 100K probably around two in the morning. I think I was like, this would only come at after three in the morning. The all kind of way, maybe it was the start of three o'clock and the end of three yeah. o'clock. I, I can't remember how exactly it was, but I remember thinking I'm a little bit ahead. But as time went on, I was like, I've, I've got a six kilometer window and a five kilometer window and a four. And that started to get narrow, narrow, narrow. And then I knew I had a marathon to do in six plus hours. I'm like, Sean, there's people that can Ooh. almost walk this. But at the same time, that's when I started getting issues, the left knee. Uh, and, and the mint cream wasn't working as good. The massage gun was still doing a bit. And I went from three laps running to two laps running to try and do a lap running and, 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 and walk a lap. And then eventually it was, um, by the time it got to the last 10 laps, it was a case of I had a, a little 300 meter where I could run, walk a bit. And then I had a good flat around to the hill again where I could run. 
And then I couldn't even run down the hill, the start line, which was getting a good bit of momentum on because the knee was killing me that much. And I'm like, right, Neve, we are not stopping anymore. We, <laughs> we are not going fast enough to stop. So like she had to meet me on the road with whether it was a sandwich or, or food. At one stage, she's like, Sean, what do you need next? I'm like, Neve, I cannot think this one. Keep doing what you're doing. So she gave me porridge. I'm like, this tastes like shit. And the next thing, like half hour later, I was getting huh, chocolate that's porridge. That's terrible. Like, Neve, is a, Neve is a great cook. <laughs> <laughs> Get me in trouble there. I but, know she uh, doesn't listen, so we're safe. Well, I think we're safe. I think we're safe. Uh, except we got a loud voice and she's in the, ro- in the room somewhat <laughs> watching TV. But then she chocolate porridge. I was like, where the hell did chocolate porridge come? I only found out the next day that was the case of... Um, she just melted a twirl bar into the chocolate and into the porridge and just it's like this is the nicest thing ever. <laughs> and off I was going again. So I had to eat on the go for those last six hours and and then um with 10 laps to go, so like an hour and a half, two hours, the folks arrived and they're near the, the starting line. And I'm walking up to them and I'm like, hi, I, I can barely say anything at this stage. I'm just nodding. 10 laps, we're still in it, trying to stay focused. Like it's, the, I, I'm in bits at this stage. And as I'm about to turn the corner, my dad's like, are you going to start running? And I was like, ah. <laughs> if I had any energy, what a... <laughs> <laughs> but what I didn't realize was, and I was so thick, but what I didn't realize the day before, Neve had told my dad about the lap where she walked with me, the 1.3K yeah. loop. And he took it as, oh, I walk some loops, run some loops. So he's got to walk the loop with me, keep me going, feed me jellies, whatever, whatever it was. But I took it as, he thinks I'm taking the piss. <laughs> I'm in an absolute <laughs> heap here. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, but there's nothing worse, I suppose, to change or better uh, to change your focus, to be like, can I run? You know, it's yeah. a statement like that would just make you question, am I sore? Just and then like a hundred meters later, you're like, yes, I am very sore. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's 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 great when you can get that support. And I suppose like there's a lot of us on that one, you're happy to be in your own head. Yes. You're happy to fight the demons. And I've felt that you know when you do your ups and your downs and you fight your demons on your own, but there is nothing like an injection. Sometimes the injection can come at a wrong time. Sometimes you're at that, you're in that dark a hole. You're like I'll just please leave me be here for a couple of minutes. And then it's, but sometimes when you see friends, family, it's like you forget about anything. Like in a marathon, those who've done it, you know, when you see someone for the next K, you're fine. Mm. All the pain goes away. And then all of a sudden you you feel it again. So did it help having the folks there for the last 10, the, the 10 it laps was a mental the battle. countdown was on? Yeah, it was, it was a mental battle. The 10 laps meant it was the the it was 20 short runs to get done. Then it was the way I had to break it down to try and keep going. But the 10 laps did feel like they took forever. But just back on, on, on that mental battle and stuff, because it was, it was 24 hours, that when you were giving out to me the day before, because you were going on a night out with Dixon, Dixon was like, what music are you listening to? And I was, you know, you don't listen to music on a race. No one listens to music on a race. You keep on going. Eric, they do listen to music on a race. So it was one of the few that hadn't got headphones. <laughs> So when it got to like the eight, nine o'clock and it got to those darker hours, some people had the headphones in to keep going. I'm like, Sean, you're not in the marathon now. This would have been great because I have the the air shock ones for, for your ears. I was like, just a bit of a, a, a pick me up would have been fantastic at that stage. This is completely different to a race to go hard. Like you said, take your mind off things. That would have been nice. And one thing I probably would recommend to people during the quieter hours, to get you through the night now like it wasn't for a sleep thing because usually 10 o'clock at night i need to go to my bed and sleep but when you're in the right mindset uh, and you know there's a good event great organizers good people around you it's mad mentally where you're at like i still can't comprehend that i i i did 24 hours it doesn't feel like i ran for 24 hours it felt like a hell of a long time don't get me wrong but to, to stay awake doing anything for 24 hours is something I would struggle with. Um, but yet, the last 10 laps, it wasn't a... I didn't feel tired, as in like mentally tired, that I needed yeah. to get some sleep. And that's probably a lot of it down to knee from nutrition and, and all the rest and, and just getting that balance right for me. But it was just, I just got to find a way to keep going. And then it was getting the case of, at what stage would this be possible if I had to walk? 
So during the walks, I was trying to get under like a nine thirty minute kilometer pace walk. So kind of speed yeah. walk and swing in the arms, all the rest to jog again. And I was getting like seven, eight minute kilometers. Then keep myself busy during that part was just, it was probably the most I was ever thinking in terms of like just constantly thinking the clock, just take my mind off the pain. Like earlier on for the first eight, 10 hours, like anything and everything was popping into my head. And like, it was, it was grand. But those last years, like just trying to stay concentrated, keep going. And like, she was always meeting me then at the bottom of that hill, whatever food and stuff I needed. And then I talk, talking me through, getting back to the tent. Okay, I need a bit of this maybe, or whatever you think. And then just keep, keep going from there. Um, yeah. And then it was only, I'd say, I had a feeling then that, that I was going to do it. But there was definitely times throughout the night where I had no hope and I was telling people, I was like, I, I think, I genuinely think I'm done. But the great thing about that is it does give yourself a second chance that I didn't think would be possible to keep on going. Because you know when you sift up, you seize up and you're barely yeah. moving. Like if that happened to me back at Ultra, it's too long to get back up and going again. I didn't yeah, think I'd get back up and going again, but somehow I, I I could. And then one of the guys there, Paul Toomey, he ran this weekend and he got top 10 doing the Bear 100 mile. But he also, excuse me, he did, I think he did 240 odd kilometers this last year uh, and he won the event. But he was there like, what do you need and stuff like that? And he was giving me salt tabs and stuff to give to me to keep on going. Placebo or not, extra little burst again and off I, off I was to the races but yeah with 23 hours 34 minutes I, I crossed the finish line then for the 120 loop and they were looking at the screens and stuff so when you're near the MC was announcing okay here comes the person about to break the 100 mile record because that, that's really a huge goal for that and then I was like right I, I'm walking the lap and your man Paul Toomey was helping me out he was like don't forget the vat you still got 24 minutes get more laps in I'm like Oh, the legs are the legs are done. Like it took me, I think, twenty four minutes to like walk a little over a kilometer for for the finish. <laughs> yeah, because I asked the same. Because where did you finish? So the way I do it is, the finish was actually great because I said, "Look, I'll go for a lap around." Dad's like, "You're not done, done." I was like, "I am done," but a hundred one miles just to put a little ribbon on top to say it wasn't a fluke for a hundred. That small bit more. So in my mind, 101 was a nice number. So what I was going through and I was getting to the starting line and I was like, right, there was around four minutes left when I did another lap. So 121 laps. And I was like, I just got a little bit further to make sure I've got that extra mile in. So my dad was walking with me and I saw a bench a little bit ahead. And one of the lads, it was like 20 seconds left. I was like, can I reach the bench? He's like, I've upset one of the lads, John Murphy's like, I've saved you a seat. So I got a little stumble run and I sat down there and you hear this horn that goes out throughout the entire, like it's it 1.3, but it's a loop. So you're not really that far ever away from the start. Yeah. yeah so once yeah. your man blows the horn, you stop there. And then a couple minutes later, a guy comes with those one of those little wheel things Under to measure. Those, yeah. yeah. And he's just, when he gets to you, number, number four. Okay. That's an extra 1.3 or 357 or whatever it was onto it. And then he add that to your score and, and away you go. And you just walk, make that slow walk back to the start line and get the ankle brace it off you and you're, and you're, and you're done. <laughs> so <laughs> Very where did you finish? apropos having an ankle brace it on for, yeah, for, for, for the day in there. Where did you finish? Uh, I, in the end, I finished sixth, which is weird because there was definitely, I definitely didn't feel like I was a top six runner there because there was guys that were faster that either got injured or the nutrition got messed up that would have lapped me a fair bit at the start. And then it just wasn't their day near the end or, or, or different ways during it. So it was nice to finish top six. But like, for example, Anto got the 100 miles, I think a good 20, 30 minutes, maybe even more before me. But he must have just taken a long break and then decided to go for a walk at the end. So I was on the scoreboard, I was like 500 meters or something behind him. But realistically, I was a good bit behind me, you know, kind of way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like he, he, when you're, we hit the hundred miles, and there's not knowing that not that close to you. It's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm done now. I would have done the same thing he did had I got there a little bit earlier as well. Dara finished third, which is phenomenal. Bula bust to him, really cool. I think he got a hundred. I want to say 178 or something like that. I'm not too sure on the kilometer number there, but uh, like just consistent. And it's it's mad because like I was like tenth or eleventh during the night. And like there's so many ahead, but then people pull out for different reasons. And getting the heat, the, the the food right with the heat and all the rest. That's why, even though she's not listening to the podcast, maybe she can overhear me now. I have to give her a ton of credit because 
the fueling and having a crew there beside you uh, and, and her, not just her, other people around as well, giving you different bits of advice or saw tabs here or there or whatever you need just to try and keep going. And everyone's there just to keep going. Like, I go out for a run right now and I was like, last as long as I can. I'm, I'm done a couple. I did it a couple months ago. I was just by myself and three, four hours. I felt fucking miserable. Even <laughs> coming in, getting a bit of food and stuff. I was like, this is horrible. When I was doing a training about elevation and I couldn't do anymore. But that, I'm not that much fitter since then, but just the right people and the right mindset, it is class and amazing what what, what you could do. Uh, and it is an event that I would recommend if you've got a distance goal that you want to hit. Yeah, and, and I suppose that's the beauty. When you do a marathon, you're like, wow, I am 10K from a finish line. You know, mm. I'm, I might as well keep going because the bus is not even bringing me back. You know, whereas yeah. <laughs> with this one, the, the beauty is you pass that star fit with the help and the hindrances. You pass the start line is the help every 1.3K, but you also pass the finish line every 1.3K but it's where you decide that finish line is for yourself. And that's the yeah. beauty of an event like this. It's how can you get your ultra distance in? Can you get 56 K in? Can you get 70 K in? Can you match an eco trail distance on a flat? You know, it is, it is what you want it to be uh, really, isn't it? You, you need a goal. I, I like, you can't rock up these events and say, ah, go for whatever distance. And then you're like, you get, let's say, 60K if you're doing the six-hour one, which sounds class, and then you're like, is that good? Is that bad? Could you push more and stuff like that? You need that when shit goes south, and it will go south, especially over 24 hours, what's going to keep you going towards that goal? Because there's times where I genuinely thought I was done, and I was like, well, I have to come all the way down here. I may as well walk for another lap or two. And I, I thought I was finished. Like, that's it. Injured, knees at me. But then you find a way to keep going again because you have that specific goal. Like if, if you're doing a marathon, the, the distance, it, it's set when you're done. So it's if it's not your day, you either walk it out or whatever, but you still get to that finish line at a certain time. Do you know what I mean? Whereas this yeah. one, it's like, you just, like you're done in 10K, but this one is like, you've got another X amount of hours to go. Are you willing to yeah, do it? Or are you willing to take a longer break and just, because it, it takes a lot, the, the benefit of back at ultra runs, why we said before is the easiest way to get a hundred miles is that it keeps you disciplined. So the first, one, the first six hours, I took off too fast. And even though my Strava wouldn't tell you that, because I was going at 6, 6, 15 paces, the odd 545, which is too fast, but I was like, I wanted to do three laps jog, one lap walk, uh, and I just couldn't bring myself to walk it because I was feeling good and I knew it would feel good later. So I was like, right, let's try and get near 90K in the first 12 hours of the goal. So when I didn't hit that goal, I was like, I'm in trouble here. There goes sleep. And I'm able to readjust from there and keep talking to Neve about game plans and all the rest. Yeah, Neve just smiling and waving back at you. <laughs> she wasn't smiling. <laughs> <laughs> she was dangling the, dangling the engagement ring and debating whether she'd bounce it off your head or not. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I definitely do the same. But yeah, look, it's regardless, you've done it. Yeah, happy out. Happy 100 out. miles in 24 hours is by no means a small feat. I can't give you credit because everyone gives me abuse then in the comments of the podcast. So um, I'm just disappointed you didn't do it in 21 hours. I um, will tell you this, though. Speaking of you, the metal is very nice. Yes. The metal, the metal is an absolute beaut. It's not wooden. <laughs> it's it, not no, it's a very nice metal. And and seemingly, I, I was told they're sending out like belt buckles as well for those to hit on the, over the 100 miles. So that, that'd be cool to have when that arrives. But yeah, no, t shirts are very nice. T shirts are very it nice is. too. You For for that, you would have loved it. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think you'd get me doing it. But it's, it's now it is. It's brilliant. Would you consider this the end of the 100 mile goal? Is this it? This other. Yeah, this, I'm, I, I've no distance. I've no distance goal. It felt the same as when I did the two thousand pull ups. As in, like I, I've no, I, I've no ambition to do two thousand five hundred pull ups or or any yeah. more than that. I was like, this is it. So at the same, having said that, the back out ultra in August with Team Elevation, I want to do the best I can for that. So. I couldn't run this week. The, the the knee is it's getting better. I've more movement in it every day, but like near the end, like the, the mint, yeah, you know, mint cream wasn't doing the business. It, it was just like this is actually sore now. So I couldn't, I couldn't well, I was using it, but it was it was no use. So that's that's been resting for a week. I got back cycling today. So building towards Mondello, 
middle of June, a little bit of running and stuff in between, then flat out in the running until August. One last goal to back at Ultra, see where we get. If I get top 15, highly unlikely considering the, the, the level of talent in this one. There's definitely one more to do. If I don't, well, you know, I tried. It, it, it's nice, but it's probably the easiest way I'll ever get to represent Ireland if I did get top 15 in that event. <laughs> uh, my sprinting well. <laughs> days are done. We tried American football and, and and you got the jersey, the green jersey that way. I did not because I didn't realize I should have been a fecking kicker. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know you look at all these lads getting NFL contracts. I was the OG of trying to break it into the NFL as an old man, but it's, um, nah, look, Sean, it's, it's excellent. And I, like I questioned, like, well, you were running it. I'm glad I wasn't there. Cause I was texting Eve going, what is he doing? Why is he running completely separate? No, for some reason she wants you really badly to come back to Ireland just in time for August. <laughs> It's, but it is a phenomenal achievement nonetheless. Like it's, it's something again, that start line feeling of this is going to be a long day and, and mm. the plan is the plan and then the plan doesn't go to plan. And it's, it's, it's something that not everyone's willing to do. Not everyone's willing to put themselves out there. I suppose we have our 3000 plus listeners each week and you've told them I'm going to, well, you didn't tell them you rat. That's the problem. I, I have. No, but, I did say, I've said consistently, I was going to do hundred miles, 24 hours. And I said three yeah. attempts as well. I, I those two never changed. This was the second attempt, yeah. um, but I never. I I I strongly hinted in the podcast that if it was something flat, I would do it. Um, you you just weren't paying attention. Maybe maybe the intro music was too loud say. for you. We didn't hear. What's that? I don't, I don't listen to a word you say ever. <laughs> um, and I don't listen back to the pot. Now I'm only joking. The um, but it's it's phenomenal. It is, and and as you've said, it's a great event in Wexford. It's a good time of year. It's a little bit better weather. You've got the first bit of sunshine. I think the the country has seen in a in a long time, and it's 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 good. It is. It's great to have achieved it. Would you look to go faster? Is a hundred miles still something you want to partake in? I love people have said that maybe I stayed away because the adrenaline. It doesn't feel like adrenaline, but I love the long distance adventures. When we did Ring of Kerry last year, I thought when it was 170k nearly done, I was like, oh, that's it. No, I could have done that faster, made that really hard for myself. And, and maybe you, you've experienced this way as well. Maybe it's why you did the full Ironman instead of the half Ironman, just that long adventure of 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 keep on going and stuff intrigues me martins will always intrigue me and and it's different beast altogether martin like some people are like oh martins must be easy now you ran 100 miles 24 hours i'm like no uh, i'm probably a four hour 30 minute martin runner at this stage because of just how different it is i need to get my intervals and stuff back but i i love i could definitely see myself do more 24 hour runs the idea of doing Connemara is really intriguing, but the, but the genuine issue is just getting someone to crew you for that long. And um, like hearing the guys that did Belfast or Dublin to Belfast recently, that sounds class, but you need someone with a car right beside you, crewing all the way through and having food and breakfast for you. And crewing is so difficult and you won't come back. Why? I was just about to say, why are you winking at me? You <laughs> <laughs> Don't sign me up to your trouble. No, it's it is, and it's it's like anything we've heard from guests over. That these things need a team, yeah. um, and then if you can get a good team, it is great crack, you know. Yes. And you're going to meet great people. You're going to be in the circuit with the, as you said, the Don and D fifty k guys, the Daras, the this, the that. You're going to find yourself surrounded by the same people. And as has been the theme to a lot of our episodes, you surround yourself with greatness. You can end up being average, you know. Like uh, you can be dragged along to be to be good enough to get by. And look, it's I I think you're nuts. I I I agree with it though in terms of it's scary, and scary means you want to do it. Yeah. Um It's 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 yeah. It's it's absolutely madness. It's 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 one of those feelings where you want to be suffering a little bit, and uh, people think that's a funny thing to say, but there's growth in it. You know, there's there's that feeling of I've been here before I've been yeah. in a worse situation before I've had no sleep over 24 hours, you know, and there's, there is growth in that, not just for running, but in everything, like a little hiccup in work and you're like, nah, <laughs> my knees aren't sore. Like for me, it's always at least we're on the ground and nothing's on fire. You know, like yeah. it's, there's, there's, there's always a way to look at things. And, and when you go through that kind of adversity and, and, 
push yourself, you learn a lot more about yourself, a hell of a lot more about how how moody you get through the night when you haven't eaten and uh, and a few other things. So it's, yeah, it's brilliant, John. It's a fantastic achievement. I'm very proud of you. I will say it there once. Disappointed I only found out 12 hours before. But not that it would have made any difference. I just would have. Had you been over here, would have oh, you would have found out a good month before because I would have need more people to help me me <laughs> through. <laughs> well, what is the turn that was just heard out there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is a great one. And and if if you're wondering who the guest is this week, it is Sean because of course it's most important to highlight some of the things we do as a, a couple of well, not really me. <laughs> But, well, wait till the tail uh, end of the year because you, you're after making some pretty big claims the last couple of weeks. The podcast, what you're going to do towards the tail end of the year that I'm really excited about. Yeah, and, yeah, and and look, we'll get to that. But today is your day. Don't drag me back down that <laughs> hole. But it's no, it is. It's it's a great achievement. It's phenomenal. A great event. Uh, well done to everyone who organised. Well done to everyone who took part. It's it's a great achievement. And for those who are only learning or joining us on the podcast and and getting to know what it is or or joining your latest running club all of us have just started with the first step all of us have just started with a 1k like even now i'm going running a 5k and wondering how did i ever run a marathon you know it's it's ebbs and flows and it's it's something that if you can be disciplined with a walk run element you can really enjoy running and, and get into it so for we haven't done a beginner running episode in a while but if you're listening to this going what have i downloaded (laughs) We have started at the start and every year we end feel like we're back at the start. And it's it's just one of those sports of consistency and it just takes the first couple of steps. Sean, when we did the marathon in 2017, to think now we had the a top podcast and you were doing the 100 mile races, I think we would have shot each other for being psychotic in, in 2017. But uh, it does take just those first steps. So well done on a on a great weekend. Well done to Neve, more importantly. And thanks for doing it. So we have content for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a fair few episodes, uh, I guess, in the, in the tank for, for the next couple of weeks. And we've got some great guests lined up. So that I'm really looking forward to uh, as we head towards, well, for me, Mondello 24. Eric's got a load of stuff coming on. It's the second half of the year, training up for that. So uh, I'm I'm excited for the rest of this year. Yeah, it's going to be a big year. There's a lot of events to come. Um, and again, keep an eye out for places that may or may not come available on that trip. Just to highlight again from the intro, um, Barcelona next year, and it's going to be a great trip. And on that full circle, thank you very much for listening to this week's episode of the Any Given Monday podcast. From myself and Eric, take care.